Surface dressing is the most widely used surface treatment on UK roads, offering a cost-effective solution for maintaining skid resistance, sealing the road surface to help reduce the occurrence of potholes, and arresting further surface deterioration. In its simplest form, the process involves preparing the road surface by pre-patching or filling potholes, cracks and the like if required, then applying a bitumen emulsion binder onto the road surface followed by aggregate chippings. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But to obtain a durable dressing that will last 10 to 15 years requires careful design and know-how. Road Note 39 is the design guide for surface dressing published by TRL, so we will now take you through the key aspects that need to be understood to enable you to complete a successful design. Also remember, to achieve good durability and long service life, we need the chippings to become consolidated and embedded into the road surface and to form a strong interlocking mosaic. The design procedure ensures this can be achieved by designing a dressing able to withstand the traffic stresses encountered on site. Step 1 The first step in designing a successful surface dressing is to carefully select sites that are suitable we need to make sure that the road or pavement is structurally sound and just needs the surface course to be treated to restore texture depth for good wet skid resistance and also to seal the surface to help keep water out. Water is the enemy of asphalt roads. If it gets into the pavement structure under traffic in, it can cause considerable damage causing potholes to form and worst case causing more serious structural damage. Surface dressing has been shown to significantly reduce pothole formation by protecting the road surface from water ingress and freeze for action in the winter, which is thought to be a major factor causing potholes to form. Figure 8.1 in Road Note 39 is useful for determining if existing road surface characteristics make it suitable for surface dressing. Roads that have very hard, hard or normal consistent and homogeneous surfaces can generally be surface dressed regardless of traffic levels. However, as the surface course exhibits more variability and signs of distress, such as fatting up, fretting and extensive patching, then the designer needs to be more cautious and mindful of the effects this could have on overall performance, and most importantly, how it affects retained texture over time, which is needed to ensure good wet skidding resistance is maintained. Step 2 Having selected the sites to be surface dressed, we need two important pieces of information for each site, the site traffic category and the road hardness. Both parameters influence the amount of binder that is applied onto the road surface and also the size of chipping. Table 7.2.3 in Road Note 39 advises what the traffic category is. Based on the number of medium and heavy vehicles using the road per lane per day. To determine the road hardness, we first need to know the surface temperature category, which is influenced by the site location within the UK. Figure 7.2.1 can be used to determine the surface temperature category. Then, depending on whether the site falls into the south, central or north categories, the appropriate road hardness chart is used. See figure 7.2.2 in Road Note 39. Before using the appropriate chart, we need to measure the road hardness using a road hardness probe. This can only be carried out when the temperature of the road surface is between 15 and 35 degrees centigrade, so therefore has to be undertaken during the previous season, assuming the sites have been allocated for surface dressing by then. So now we have the traffic category and the road hardness information for the site which will be needed when we get on to determining the final design. The surface temperature category also influences the seasonality of the surface dressings. Sites that fall into categories A and B, South and Central regions have a wider working window or longer season than those that fall into categories C and D, Central and North. Figure 7.3.2 in Road Note 39 provides useful guidance on when to start and finish the season depending on which surface temperature category the site is located and what type of surface dressing design is being used. Step 3 Step 3 involves determining the type of surface dressing to be used. 
There are five main types. Single dressings, racked in dressings, double dressings, inverted double dressings, and sandwich dressings. The first three are the most commonly used in the UK. Racked in and double dressings are able to withstand more traffic stress than single dressings, and double dressings are particularly good at reducing the road traffic noise, which may be helpful in urban locations, and also may minimize the risk of failure in late season work. Figures 8.3a and 8.3b can be used to determine the type of surface dressing to be used and also the preferred type of binder. Figure 8.3a deals with the lightly trafficked sites, traffic categories G and H, and 8.3b deals with heavily trafficked sites, traffic categories A to F. So you need to determine which flowchart to use by referring to the traffic category for the site in question. Both charts ask a series of questions that need to be answered based on site information and in particular takes account of the stress on the site, e.g. junctions, bends and gradients when selecting the most appropriate dressing. Having determined the types of service dressing to use and the binder type, we can then progress to the design stage. Step 4 to determine the surface dressing design, i.e. the sizes of chipping and rate of spread of binder, we need to select the most appropriate design table in Road Note 39. Table 9.2.1 covers single dressings, 9.2.2 racked in dressings and 9.2.3 for double dressings. Having selected the appropriate table based on the type of dressings being used, we then cross-reference the road hardness information and traffic category to determine the basic design. For example, a racked in dressing table 9.2.2 on a road with normal hardness and traffic category E has a design of R10 with a binder spread rate of 1.8 litres per square metre. R10 refers to the nominal chipping size designation shown in Table 5.1.1 in Road Note 39. Step 5 Having determined the basic design, we then need to take account of local conditions which may further influence the design, such as late season working, tree shade, chipping shape, surface condition, gradients and traffic speed. Table 9.2.6 in Road Note 39 addresses all of these issues and recommends appropriate adjustments to the binder rate of spread. For example, late season work could result in early frost damage, so increasing the binder rate of spread by 0.2 litres per square metre helps to counter this risk. Chipping shape is important for achieving good embedment, so if the chipping is very cubical, it will require more binder to hold it in place initially. Flaky chippings can result in poor embedment, poor mosaic formation and poor retained texture depth, so it's important to monitor the quality of chippings used. So we have now gone through the basic design procedure for the surface dressing of a site using the guidance contained within Road Note 39 published by TRL. Of course, for some sites, the conditions will vary along the site, requiring a different design at different locations, or at least some further adjustments may be required to ensure the durability is not compromised. By following the design guidance in Road Note 39, surface dressing will continue to successfully maintain the UK's biggest publicly owned asset, the UK Road Network. Further information on surface dressing can be obtained by visiting the RSTA website www.rsta-uk.org